You would think that the answer to a problem like this would be to glow up. And that's what I thought too. I thought it would make me happy. And it did. But it also ruined my life. This is going to be really hard. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, we will be revisiting Olivia D'Andrea's weight loss journey with her first glow up diary entry since January, 2021. Now, before we get too into things, I want to quickly flag that there will be some discussion of mental health struggles, disordered eating and unaliving here. But as always, I will be trying to approach this with as much sensitivity as I can. Okay, before we go too far, let's chat about my sponsor today, Element. So Element has been in heavy rotation in my supplement arsenal for a few years now. It really helped get me through breastfeeding, tennis lessons in Florida heat, jet lag travel days, sickness, hangovers obviously, and a lot more. My sports RD colleagues first told me about Element specifically because they use it with a lot of their elite clients because it has a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium, plus it has no colors, sugars, or fillers. Electrolytes have so so many important roles in the body from regulating nerve impulses, hormones, nutrient absorption, and fluid balance. If you are depleted, you will feel it and it does not feel good. I'm currently in like a watermelon salt phase, but they've got nine different flavors and I love to switch it up. And right now you can try all their flavors since Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packets for free with any Element order. This is a really great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. So you can get yours at drinkelement.com slash abbysharp. This deal is only available through my link. So you've got to go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Abby Sharp. Okay. As a recap, I followed Olivia's journey over the early COVID years. And honestly, I was overwhelmed with empathy and sadness throughout her journey. When Olivia started this series six years ago, she was 18 years old, 18. And what basically started as a desire to lose a bit of weight before college spiraled into severe restriction and overexercising, which then not surprisingly quickly rebounded into binge eating and what she described as an addiction to sugar. This is the I want to tone up to full blown ED pipeline that we so often see here. My observations when I commented on the series several years ago was that her approach was basically perpetuating the restrict binge cycle that encouraged her to want to glow up in the first place. That is a lot of all or nothing hyper restrictive food and exercise patterns with a militant no pain, no gain attitude. I wanted to destroy my old self, so I started pushing past my limits because I wanted to get to my dream self as fast as possible. Oh, I don't even want to drink this water. I think I'm gonna throw up. This is one of my happiness formulas that did indeed succeed. You've got to create these rules in your head. If this, then that. Here's mine. If I'm doing hard things, then I'm happy. The last we saw, Olivia was glowing up by society standards at least. She was inspiring her audience with her dramatic 10 inch, 32 pound weight loss and her internal mental toughness regime. And then she went dark. And exactly three years later, we now have a decent idea why. Because my lifestyle is out of whack and yes, I have gained a little bit of weight back. I couldn't maintain a balance in my life and as a result, I couldn't hold on to my dream body. I said it then and I'm going to say it again. Restriction, especially at the level we witnessed in the glow up diaries, is a setup for a binge. It is not a sign of weakness. It's not even a sign of sugar addiction. It is a sign that your body is strong and resilient and willing to fight for you to survive. In fact, I'm not even going to get into whether or not Olivia was addicted to sugar during this time in her life, but the research on sugar addiction found that it was only when rats were restricted from sugar did they display symptoms of addiction and withdrawal. In other words, binging on sugar and rebounding from a significant weight loss is a normal expected bodily response. In 
In her recent video, My Glow Up Ruined My Life, she basically articulates the impact of public opinion on her body image, especially when she's got like millions of keyboard warriors pouncing to say their bit. I went back on YouTube to complete my story and I didn't expect that many people to watch it. You get hooked on the high of the winds and validation. If I failed now, there was really no point in living anymore. The humiliation pushed me to such a low point that I thought, I'd rather die than be a failure. You start to feel like the world is watching your every move, like you cannot be less than this standard. I became really self-conscious and even a little bit of weight gain made me feel insecure. You know, this is the challenge of sharing any kind of journey online. So you put yourself out there in your most raw, vulnerable state, trying to make a connection with others who may be going through that same experience. And you get torn apart when the journey is less than perfect. You know, the careful curation of social media has really led us to expect symmetry and predictability and completion of the content we see. It's like, girl has a problem, girl goes through a series of challenges which demonstrates her resilience and strengths to fix said problem, and in the end, girl overcomes all adversity and succeeds. We walk away feeling relieved, satisfied, and inspired. I mean, if we compare the Glow Up Diaries to really any other Glow Up series, even the reality ones, which are supposed to be a representation of real life, like The Biggest Loser, for example, we expect a predictable, satisfying narrative. You know, like Biggest Loser contestants are fat, unhappy, and sick. So they get put through literal hell on the ranch by some of the most inhumane coaches. But hey, it worked. It was worth it. They're all skinny and look how happy they now are. And so now we're all inspired to quit sugar and go on the Stairmaster for at least a week. What they don't show you is the fact that Biggest Loser contestants saw a dramatic decline in metabolism and nearly all of them gained back most, if not all of the weight that they were tortured to lose. No, because the cameras stop rolling at peak inspiration. But real life doesn't look like that, does it? Is this real life? And unfortunately, we as consumers have been sold this lie that it does. So when we see a journey that isn't A to B, it's more like A to C to H to Z to X to L, repeat, we get scared. We get a little aggressive. This is not the Cinderella story we signed up for. And sadly, Olivia has been at the receiving end of that aggression. Other creators were commenting on my journey and it led to me receiving a lot of messages. I'm just trying to be the best version for me and I'm trying to make others feel better as I share my journey. It's like, it's like people, I can feel negative comments so happy with the fact that I didn't reach this perfect version. I wanna make it crystal clear that even when I disagree with content being put out into the world, it is never an invitation to attack that person. If anything, 99% of the time when content creators get on the horde and spread misinformation or messages that I interpret as potentially being disordered or triggering, I have an enormous amount of empathy because they too are victims of diet culture. And Olivia is a real perfect example of this. I said it in my last video too. I cried along with her on this journey because she was sold dangerous lies wrapped up in this promise of a perfect happy life as long as she pushed herself to get thin. Diet culture is like a virus. It's not just a little cold. It was always there. It was always endemic, always present. But social media has turned it into a true epidemic. And every new piece of content that goes out there that spreads this false narrative that the more you suffer, the skinnier you'll be, the happier you'll be, the more this virus spreads. And then I punish myself in the workout. See, this is the thing. People are gonna go like, oh, he eats whatever he wants, oh, whatever. When I go into that gym, I'm like, I deserve to die for how I've eaten, so I'm gonna try to work myself to death. And you have to be willing to sacrifice the things that you want, you have to trade things that are fun, like meals at restaurants, things like that, for, you know, long, arduous periods of time exercising and physically exhausting and yeah. grueling work. This thing has like an R naught value of potentially millions. And as we can see in this video, the outcomes can be truly devastating. 
Celebrities, influencers, content creators with millions of fans are not untouchable, distant, abstract figures. And the anonymity of the internet coupled with the perceived distance between celebrities and their fans creates this sense of detachment that completely normalizes trolling and results in people leaving comments like this. This culture of cyberbullying public figures about their appearance, it honestly hurts us all. Like research suggests that social media is the number one factor driving women's opinions about their bodies. And if we're all witness to hundreds of random strangers piling onto an already straight sized young woman for gaining back weight that she lost through disordered behaviors, we come to expect that even the tiniest change in our body will be met with public vitriol. It is no wonder that it took Olivia three years to heal from the inside out. And that according to her, that meant letting go of external indicators and motivators to success. So we try to conform to the world standard, thinking that it makes us better people and that it helps us grow. But chasing a goal out of seeking the world's approval is an insecure goal. Insecure goals causes unhealthy pressure, which can create toxic patterns. When we seek validation from others to feel worthy, we start to believe that our worthiness depends on their approval. And the very first step to everlasting improvement is making peace with all versions of yourself. In psychology speak, we call this leaning into intrinsic motivators that seek health promoting behaviors and habits as acts of self care over extrinsic motivators, which research suggests are largely built around guilt avoidance and people pleasing. In Olivia's case, both of these seem to play a role. She talked a lot about being humiliated by how others perceived her when she had originally gained weight and was also terrified that if she didn't see this process to the finish line, that people would see her as a failure. What Olivia needed to finally truly grow up was that intrinsic motivation, a journey towards self-confidence, self-worth, and self-acceptance. Self-acceptance is not about complacency, but about acknowledging your current reality and not judging it. When we judge ourselves so harshly, it affects our self-worth. When our self-worth lowers, it can cause us to go seek that love on the outside through external goals or other people because we are not getting that love from the inside. You know, this is such an important realization. A lot of people will criticize folks who aren't actively seeking weight loss despite not having a socially defined ideal body as being lazy and complacent. But research consistently suggests that shame and judgment do not motivate people to make better decisions for their health. In fact, perceived weight discrimination or fat shaming is linked to a 6.7 times greater risk of obesity. By acknowledging our situation in a neutral way, we can remove the negative judgment that pressures us to change. When we release negative judgment, we create space for self-awareness and compassion. We start to listen to ourselves more, become more in tune with our thoughts and feelings, and are able to stand up for ourselves and choose what we really want to do. Yes, according to self-determination theory, if we wanna be able to make sustainable behavior changes by cultivating that intrinsic motivation, these behaviors and choices need to be grounded in the act of self-care, not punishment. They need to be designed by you, for you, without excess influence from the outside world. They need to make you feel confident because they uniquely feel good to you and your body. And if there is any kind of external motivation, it needs to come from people who will support you no matter what your journey will look like. The ups, the downs, no judgment, no shame. Our love for ourselves should be such a basic human need that you should have at all times and it should not be dependent on a goal. How you have to develop that healthy relationship with yourself first before going to chase those external goals in life. Yep, the work starts here. Not in the gym, not in the kitchen. And loads of high quality evidence confirms that fostering a strong sense of autonomy, self-determination, and intrinsic motivation over external rewards results in far greater weight loss success rates long-term. I know that the world responded really beautifully to Olivia's most recent video, and we love that, but we also know that the internet is fickle as 
One week, you're garnering love and praise, and the next, you're being ripped apart. So clearly, we can't trust the YouTube community at large to be that supportive rock that will support people like Olivia through the roller coaster that is real life. So I am so glad that she's retiring this series and moving on to a dating diary series, which I think will give her that breathing room for her body to do what it's going to do when she's finally giving it the respect it deserves. And I truly wish Olivia all the best on all of her journeys, especially the body love one, because that is truly the foundation to reaching any and every goal while building yourself back up if and when things don't go as planned. As Olivia said, You stop restricting yourself from the simple joys of life because you realize you deserve to be happy. Life truly is short and real true happiness should always be the goal. So whether or not you have your goal body or your goal career or your goal relationship, do not hold out on granting yourself happiness until you do. And on that note, a reminder to be kind in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And hit up my description to pre-order my new supplement line, New Theory Today. And I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.